disease is when the body is not functioning normally. Something is stopping the body from doing what it can usually do, and this makes a person unwell. Some diseases can be caused by genes, and these are inherited. Other diseases are infectious, which means you can catch them from other people who already have the disease. In this video we'll look at both types of disease, what causes them, and how they affect humans. The first type of disease we will look at are genetic diseases. These are caused by the combination of alleles that a person has inherited from their parents. Most genetic diseases are recessive, meaning you need to inherit two copies of the disease-causing allele to have the disease. If you have one healthy allele and one disease-causing allele, you're the carrier. This means you're healthy, but you are able to pass on the allele that could cause the disease to your offspring. This is how two healthy parents are able to produce a child with a recessive genetic disease. The Punnett square shows two parents who are both carriers have a 25% or 1 in 4 chance of producing a child with the disease. Cystic fibrosis is a genetic disease caused by a recessive allele. The most well-known symptoms of cystic fibrosis are being short of breath and frequent coughing. Cystic fibrosis causes the body to produce mucus at the bottom of the trachea or windpipe that's thicker and more sticky than normal. This is what causes the cough and it can also lead to lung infections as the mucus builds up in the lungs over time. Thick, sticky mucus is not only produced in the trachea, however, it's also produced in the pancreas, which then blocks the tube carrying digestive enzymes to the small intestine. This means that food is not broken down properly, so people with cystic fibrosis can be underweight. These symptoms combined mean people who suffer from cystic fibrosis have a lower life expectancy than people without the disease. Another genetic disease caused by a recessive allele is sickle cell disease. This condition causes the red blood cells which carry oxygen around the body to change into a sickle shape. And they're not able to carry as much oxygen as normal red blood cells. Symptoms of sickle cell disease are tiredness and a lack of energy caused by the reduced oxygen in the blood, as well as painful joints and muscles where the damaged red blood cells group together. Low oxygen levels can also lead to dizziness and fainting. Genetic diseases so they're caused by the combination of alleles a person has are very difficult to treat. You can be cured, but often the symptoms can be treated so they affect the person as little as possible. On the other hand, infectious diseases are caused by pathogens. These pathogens could be a bacteria, fungi, a virus, or a protozoa. Where the infectious diseases can be spread between people in many different ways depending on the particular pathogen involved. For example, cholera is caused by a bacterium that spread through water. Salmonella bacteria can cause food poisoning. The common cold and influenza are both caused by viruses that are airborne and can spread by sneezing out virus particles and someone else breathing them in. The fungus that causes athlete's foot can only be picked up through contact between the skin and fungus. HIV, the virus that can lead to a person developing AIDS, body fluids such as blood being shared. Finally, diseases can spread using animal vectors. The tree is caused by a bacterium that spread by houseflies, while malaria is caused by a Anopheles mosquito. These vectors do not suffer from the disease themselves, but they are able to carry the pathogen from someone who has the disease to a healthy person, and so the disease spreads. Some infectious disease can be treated using certain drugs. Antibiotics are used to control infections. Antibacterials treat bacterial infections while antifungals treat fungal infections. So someone suffering from cholera might be given an antibacterial by their doctor while an antifungal might be used to treat athlete's foot. Because viruses are not living, they are not affected by antibiotics. So someone suffering from flu or HIV would not be given an antibiotic as it would have no effect on the pathogen causing that disease. Better than treating an infectious disease is trying to avoid getting it in the first place. Antiseptics are chemicals used to prevent the spread of infection by using them to clean surfaces. The body also has a series of defences to prevent pathogens from getting inside. These include physical barriers such as skin, cilia and mucus. Chemical defences kill pathogens on contact. 
such as hydrochloric acid in the stomach and lysozymes in tears. For the pathogen to cause a disease, it would need to get past all of these defences. Though diseases can be genetic or they can be infectious. Genetic diseases, such as cystic fibrosis and sickle cell disease, are usually caused by a recessive allele for a gene. They cannot be cured and can only be passed on through reproduction. Cystic fibrosis causes thick, sticky mucus to build up in the lungs and pancreas, leading to coughing, lung infections and being underweight. It also shortens life expectancy. Sickle cell disease stops the red blood cells carrying as much oxygen as they should, which leads to tiredness, faintness and painful joints. Infectious diseases are caused by pathogens and can be spread through water, food, air, contact, body fluids or animal vectors. Each disease is caused by a particular pathogen but spread in a certain way. To stop the spread of disease, we can use antiseptics to kill pathogens on surfaces or use antibiotics to control an infection that's already happening. The body has a series of physical and chemical barriers to help defend itself against attack pathogens.